In today's video, I will be going over the basics of TIG welding. For those wondering, TIG welding is a welding process where a current is forced to jump a gap from the electrode to the parent material. The electrical discharge from the electrode creates a plasma that reaches way above 5000 degrees Celsius. This plasma creates a weld puddle wherein you can add additional material to fill up a gap or to strengthen a weld joint. When a material is heated, it becomes more reactive and therefore it attracts oxygen. When oxygen enters a weld pool, it becomes corroded. When oxygen enters the weld pool, it can create tiny bubbles inside of the steel that can weaken a weld joint and result in mechanical failure. Therefore, a shielding gas is used, called argon. The argon flows from a diffuser that can either look like this, which is a sieve, or it can just be a pipe with four holes going in each direction. To obtain proper shielding of both the electrode and the material you're welding on, a ceramic cup is usually threaded on. When TIG welding, it's very important to have proper and clean materials, so I usually just take some acetone and pour a batch on a cloth and then I take both my welding wire and my materials and I wipe them off. As you just saw, the welding wire actually had a lot of contaminants. Before we can actually weld anything, we have to start up our machine. The first thing I usually do is turning on the gas. This ensures that all of the lines in the welding hose are filled with gas. And then it depends on what machine you have, but my start button is here on the back. And you might of course want some electricity too, or else it doesn't work. And when you've got the machine running, you usually have a couple of settings. On this button, I can adjust the amperage and the other buttons are not that important right now, but you can adjust how you turn on the welder. You can also adjust the after gas, which is how long the gas flows after you've terminated a weld. After you've cleaned your materials and figured out how your machine starts and works, it's time to do some welding joints. In today's lesson, I'll be showing you three typical joints. The first one is an outside corner joint. The next one is a T-joint or an inside corner joint. And the last one is a lap joint. When TIG welding, it's very important to cover all of your skin because the electrical discharge creates UV light, which is quite harmful for your skin. And you also want to be in a ventilated area because some of the fumes are not that healthy for you. Please consider your safety and yeah, I think that's it. When buying a packet of wire, it's way too long for a beginner. That's why I would generally recommend snapping it in half just like that. This makes it much easier to balance. When taking up the outside corner joint, I would recommend you getting a piece of angle iron and just supporting it from both sides so that you don't have to use any hands to hold and position your parent material. After that, you just take your tungsten and then you place it right above where you want to tack the joint. And remember to have a sharp tungsten. This ensures that your weld puddle stays calm. And have your filler wire ready to fill in the weld puddle right here on the corner. For this tack, I'll be doing about 120 amps. You always need to have your ground clamp attached to either your work table or to the material itself or else you will get shocked. All right, that's the first joint tacked up. I'll just be tacking on the other joints right here in the beginning, and then I'll be welding it all later in the video. Next up is the T-joint, and I'll just be holding this material with one hand, and then pointing the electrode right here at the corner, and then I will harvest some of the material from this plate right here and drag it down into the bottom plate. Just like I mentioned before, I used 120 amps, which is decently high. And the reason for the high amps when tacking is that you don't put a lot of heat into the part. As you can see, it's very shiny and there are not any contaminants in the tack. These other two went a bit more slowly and I also added some contaminants with the filler wire. So they didn't get too pretty. And also one important thing to remember is that the gas is like water. When you are on the outside of a joint, it wants to flow away from the joint and then you don't get a lot of coverage. But when you're in a crease, it accumulates just like water in a river and then it wants to stay here and the weld is always going to be much better. The last joint for today is a lap joint and I'll just be placing a couple of tacks right here on the corner. All right guys, I'll be starting with one of the easiest joint 
which is the outside corner joint. You have great visibility and access to the well. And as for the amperage, I'll be going down to about maybe 100, 110. One important thing is that when you start your puddle, you want to let it get to the size you want before you start moving along. So when your puddle covers from the peak to the peak, you want to start going ahead. But before, you'll just have to wait. I did miss a corner right there and I also hit it with the Y wheel because it did get a bit of color which isn't optimal but yeah I guess this will hold pretty well and I may have said this was one of the easiest joints but it's quite hard to catch the edge and yeah the next well is going to be the lap joint. That was the second weld. And now for the last one, I'll be doing the inside corner. That was the last weld and for stainless steel, it's very important to take off the color because it's actually an oxide. Even though it's pretty colors like blue and yellow, it still has the tendency to start corroding after some time. For all of these welds you can do multiple passes if the joint is bigger and I actually want to show that for this joint right here. And to do that you will generally need to do some side to side motion. It's also quite easy to see the heat signatures on the stainless steel as you can see as I'm going along, it's getting way hotter than I would usually like it to be, but since it's a small piece and I haven't cooled it down between passes, that is uninevitable. Really hope that helped you guys getting started with TIG welding. As you can see, I'm still not a professional, but I try to get better every day. That was it for me today, and it would mean the world to me if you press the subscribe button. These videos take a lot of work, and if you really enjoyed what I did today, Please hit the like and if you have any other suggestions for other videos, please write them down in the comments. Bye bye guys!